Ja. So today I'm not going to talk about dark matter. So I'm going to talk about standard model. And uh, today is the Lagrangian and symmetric. That is the topic of today. But uh, I need to give you a brief uh, introduction to dark matter and standard model. Oh, why the, it doesn't accept my pipe, my pen. I don't know what, what is the problem. If the charge is in out, hmm? so is it, okay. is it a pen charge is in out? Yeah, I think yeah the problem solved now. I think I can see this one. Okay, uh, let me start from the standard model. Okay, but I I will uh, briefly introduce you to dark matter. So I will, but uh, I mean the fact on the dark matter. What we know about standard the standard model first. Standard model uh, is the the for instance the standard model because it is not a standard model the standard model because this is unique. There's nothing else. Uh, which can explain all the data up to now. So standard model, normally when we stand, say about standard model, we are talking about a glacial, Weinberg, and so on. So those three people are awarded Nobel Prize in physics because of the discovery the standard model, but uh, there are publications uh, in this uh, in those years, in different years, but they discovered uh, the standard model independently. So GWS models in specific, I think the uh, the electroweak uh, sector standard model. Uh, we know that uh, describing the interactions of the fundamental particles and the fundamental interactions of the elementary particles. So you know that uh, there are forces and matter. Just to let me, uh, so at the at elementary level, so forces, we have a gravity and electromagnetic interactions that you have already learned um from the undergraduate so gravity and electromagnetic interactions so ranges infinity and we know that gravity and electromagnetic interactions valid from galaxies to atom mixed scales and also solid state physics Right, and also uh, we have subnuclear uh, physics. The protons the proton, I mean the uh, we, we said atom is the proton and electrons, and the protons we know that has a finite size. It's not a point particle. It's about 10 to the minus 15 meter. And we understand the strong the protons. So proton is a, a composite particle. It's, it's not elementary particle due to the strong interactions, right? And then also nuclear processes. So, we have uh, in the period the table, we have a heavy elements. Uh, most of them are unstable because of the nuclear uh, decays, so beta decay. 
So that uh, nuclear processes are uh, ascribed to, typically ascribed to weak force. Attribute to, to attribute the weak force, right? Strong, so strong force. Let me just. In the matter uh, is the composed of the elementary particles. Elementary particles in the standard model, quarks and leptons. Uh, but the, there is also Higgs, <clears throat> but the Higgs is not, uh, is is more on uh, the additional force. So he said force, scalar force. So quarks and leptons, uh, and then from quarks we know that we are uh, the quarks are quarks do not exist individually. We know the quarks make uh, hadrons, mesons and baryon. And the uh, major is boson and baryon is fermion. The uh, major is the bound state of the quark and anti-quark pair, Q prime Q bar. Normally Q and Q, Q prime Q don't have to be the same. They can be different and Q, Q prime, Q double prime. The baryon is composed of three quarks in the color neutral. So color, we are going to discuss what are the colors. And then hadrons uh, uh, can be uh, composite because of the gluons. So we are going to talk about uh, the strong force. Actually, uh, the gluons, as you know, the the force carriers for the strong force. So, uh, because the, in the standard model, uh, there is a gauge symmetry. Uh, the gauge symmetry describes this uh, forces. So forces, this is a kind of a, uh, apparent, uh, we don't know what is the origin of forces uh, from the beginning, but the in standard model means we are describing forces based on the gauge principle. So gauge symmetry. So, so gauge symmetry we call SU times SU2 plus U1. The gauge symmetry, we have uh, three different factors. Uh, and those are SU3, SU2, U1. Those are independent because of that we are taking the product of different gauge symmetry. So when the gauge symmetry is unbroken, so we are talking about gauge symmetry. Uh, what is the, then what is the object? which respect the gauge symmetry. So we are going to la the Lagrangian. So we are going to consider Lagrangian. The Lagrangian must be uh, <coughs> invariant, does not change under the gauge transformation. So if uh, the gauge symmetry is unbroken, the fermion masses, all the fermion masses equal to zero, right? And uh, also, here the weak forces are limited uh, in the subatomic uh, scales at the short distances. So the weak forces will be, uh, the range of weak force would be infinite if the gauge symmetry is unbroken, like a W boson, G boson, they are zero. Like photon mass is zero, right? So. Because of that, we are uh, discussing the spontaneous symmetry breaking. So, 
So spontaneous symmetry breaking. So, uh, so I think that there is also very interesting discussion on the spontaneous symmetry breaking. Jabalchog in, in Korean, Jabalchog in Punke. Spontaneous symmetry break. So spontaneous, uh, it's not, uh, smart spontaneous means it's broken in the vacuum. Spontaneous means the system is aligned to a particular direction, right? So if uh, we have a magnet, so it is actually, actually the particular, I mean, we are taking some example, I mean, the paramagonet, paramagonet, right? Uh, in the, uh, in, in each atom is magnet and at high temperature above TC, uh, each magnet uh, directed randomly. So there is a symmetry. So you don't have a particular direction in this system. So you can see the same thing if, if you see uh, all the older directions, you see the same thing, right? But the, this system broken uh, below TC, below the critical temperature, uh, the, at, uh, the small magnet aligned up to a particular direction. So this is the vacuum kind of, we can think about uh, this kind of analogy of the alignment of the system to a particular direction. So we call this as a spontaneous symmetry breaking. Then, uh, then if there's a spontaneous symmetry breaking, uh, so of course the, this kind of condensed, ma condensed matter system, there will be order parameter. So something will change. So that order, order parameter in, uh, in the standard model is the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs. So here, the, in this case, vacuum expectation value of the Higgs is zero. Then the particle masses are zero. If Higgs vacuum expectation value is non-zero, then those particle masses become non-zero. And those are, all the particle masses are proportional to the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs, uh, Higgs field. So, uh, so I think that there's also interesting discussion uh, how to describe, there, there's the exact analogy between Higgs mechanism, so-called Higgs mechanism and the magnetization. So here we are talking about magnetization. So the exact, so in this case, the average value of the uh, magnetization is not zero. So magnetization is, has a direction. So in this case, average the magnetization equal to zero, right? So the Higgs path and the magnetization, they are one-to-one -one correspondence. So oh, this- hmm? Is Higgs wave is dependent on temperature, like uh, the magnet, magnet? Yeah, and that's a good question, yes. So we can think about uh, Higgs mechanism as uh, the dynamical process. So depending on uh, the temperature, we don't, we don't, but we don't know. But we don't know how we call the, this is a phase transition, right? So phase transition. No magnetization from no magnetization to magnetization. So this is a phase transition, but we don't know whether how this uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking occurs in the standard model. <clears throat> we just parameterize it 
uh, at the zero temperature, and we define the the vacuum. But we don't know how. We don't know. We don't understand how. What, what is the dynamical uh, mechanism? I don't know. We don't. Dynamical mechanism means temperature dependence, as you said, for spontaneous systematic working in the standard model. We don't know. Just we can parameterize it, and but the uh, at least we can say in the standard model, if a standard model is correct, we can say that this phase transition will be second order. So, so second order uh, is a smooth, uh, smooth transition. And so then uh, the temperature, if the temperature is greater than critical temperature, the Higgs felt is zero, critical temperature. So this critical temperature uh, is about electro weak scale. But uh, you can uh, actually you can identify what is the critical temperature in the standard model. But if you have a new physics, uh, this the property of phase transition changes, and also the order of the phase transition changes. So we don't know yet so if this is first order, like a. Uh, when you uh, boil water, you could see bubbles created in the water. The bubble start uh, being created, and once they created, they collide each other, right? And then they percolate. The cold percolate, and the bubbles are overlapping, and they collide, and then. They populate and then they make a bigger bubbles sometimes, but they disappeared. So some this kind of process is we call this is a second first order instead of second order. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Uh, the early cosmology, the temperature uh, in the condensed matter system, the, there is a controllable temperature. But uh, if you go to the early universe. The temperature will be determined by the matter uh, in the universe. Right? What is the uh, matter in the universe? For okay, so uh, uh, in the standard model, as I said, the gauge symmetry must be broken spontaneously in the vacuum. Then, uh, as a consequence of the standard model, of course, the particle mass is non zero. <laughs> so, therefore, we can explain the difference between weak force and electromagnetic interaction. So this is the merit of the standard model. We didn't understand what is the difference, but kind of you are, we are unifying these two different forces uh, because they are unbroken and they broken because of that. Uh, they appear different, different. And yeah, so let me, uh, so be because of that, the gauge symmetry is important. And uh, once you introduce something, you need to break it. But this is not always the case. So symmetry is there to be broken. Some people say that if you introduce symmetry, you need to break it. This is kind of a, a paradox. So, so symmetry must be there to be broken. So symmetry, gauge symmetry, plus uh, renormalizability. I'm not going to discuss renormalization. Uh, but it is important, renormalizability. But uh, I, I think that you will get, get some feeling uh, what is 
renormalizable, what is non renormalizable. So from these two, we can construct the standard model Lagrangian. So before going to the details, uh, uh, just let me uh, remind you the particle content, the standard model, and the basic structure, uh, for instance. So, so we have standard model content, the matter content. So we are all familiar with that from basic, I mean, lectures on basic uh, particle physics. But just let me repeat that uh, again. So, so we have three generation, uh, up, down, charm, strange, and top and bottom. So sometimes you are confused with, uh, about these notations. So what, what, is, what about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, something like that. But the, it's the up and down, charm, strange, and top and bottom, something like <laughs> And you know, uh, those, uh, those quarks uh, carry electromagnetic charge. So, so top, charm, sorry, up type, up quark, charm quark, top quark, top quark, they carry charge plus two third and the bottom minus one third. And this L is the chirality. Chirality, uh, we denoted this uh, sub, subscript uh, we denote correlative by this subscript. So left-handed means this, there are two components, right? In left-handed, so this is left-handed, right? So there is also like right-handed. The left-handed correlative means it's the left-handed. So right-handed, so left-handed right so left left in the direction of motion. Right, P. The spin direction, spin. Spin uh, rotating clockwise, that is the left handed, right? So this particle has this, this correlative. And another thing is the two component. The components. So there's the equal doubly. Double it transform under SU2L. So there's a two, a number two in SU2 group. This two is related to the double two component, right? So this two, so first, this this is first two and second and the third generation, they are repeating and they have the same properties under the SU2 left-handed right and then they carry the same uh, electromagnetic charges and then what makes difference between the two component of course the electromagnetic charges that they are distinguished and also the w boson exchanges from one flavor to another so the w boson you walk up quark changes. So up quark, you, as you re remember this, oops. This carry, uh, can you see my screen? So I don't know if it's interrupted. Yes, I can, the roof diagram. Yeah. You can see, uh, in this uh, transition from up quark to down quark, the electromagnetic charge is conserved. So you see what is the value? This is plus, right? 
W boson plus one charge. So in this vertex, the direction of motion, so W boson goes like this, right? So there must be charge conservation. The W boson changes from up to down or down to up, right? And also there is a, a force carrier, another force carrier, W boson is the part of the force carrier, right? So this is SU2. Two, two plus minus. And also there is a up, up or down, down. Uh, changes doesn't change the quark uh, types, just up to up, down to down. The W, uh, we denote it zero, W zero, which are neutral, so charging neutral. So this also again, we you know SU2, belong to SU2. And W3 is a charging neutral. Uh, can be decomposed into G boson and photon after uh, symmetry is broken. So spontaneous symmetry breaking. And uh, this G boson. And this is photon. So so let me give you one, uh, two, two, two processes uh, for which the electro weak, uh, weak forces are important. So weak forces. So just to, these are this kind of Feynman diagram. These are Feynman diagrams. Just to, we are uh, going to draw some simple Feynman diagrams for a uh, weak decays, some beta, beta decays. We know that uh, uh, <coughs> beta decays, there are several uh, processes. The first, uh, I mean, the neutrino here, we, I didn't discuss neutrino yet, the lepton sector. So what is, so this is a quark, right? This are or quark sector. So there are leptons, as I said before. So leptons, just to we we know the answer. Uh, electron, neutrino, elect, neutrino, electron, neutrino, electron, double it, muon, it, muon neutrino, muon also double it, and tau neutrino. Tau is also doubly. And uh, also left handed L means the chirality. So this component of the fermion has a particular chirality. And I forgot to tell you about uh, the right handed. So there's also other, for instance, you can imagine the, something like this. Up type, up quark, right handed, down, right handed, charm. So, so same. Top, right handed. So, this uh, R is the uh, right handed. Right handed. So, so, those are quarks. Q, let me call this QR. It's a singlet, so a single component under the SU2. So this is we call singlet under SU2, meaning that this right-handed component does not change under the SU2. So singlet component. So so because of the left-handed right-handed, so right-handed so right-handed right the right hand. Right, and the direct, with respect to the direction of motion, this guy spins counterclockwise, right-handed, spin differently. So those, uh, it's very weird why they are 
transforming differently. Apparently, the left-handed and right-handed, uh, if you have a mirror, then they transform differently under the mirror symmetry, the left-handed and right-handed. Uh, so the parity, parity, so-called parity is violated explicitly in the standard mode because of the SU2, SU2 electroweak. But as you remember, there are SU3 and SU and hypercharge. Of course, hypercharge also distinguishes between left-handed and right-handed due to the different U1 charges. But in the end, you know that, uh, uh, yeah, and we are going to discuss. In the end, uh, these two is broken to U1 electromagnetism. So this, this guy and SU2, those are parity, is a good symmetry. But this only this guy is a parity broken explicitly. So you can think about uh, this structure before we are going to the details. So I, uh, I stop. Uh, I need to continue to discuss the lepton sector. Maybe we can, uh, after that, we can uh, make a full pause uh, for, for a few minutes. So leptons, as you know, uh, I mean, electron discovered first and muon, who ordered the, who ordered that? We didn't expect the existence of muon, but it is discovered from cosmic rays, as you remember. And then also tau discovered, tau is discovered from the collider. We need high energy to produce tau. So tau you cannot see uh, easily from cosmic rays. And then it decays very fast. So you can see muon and muon arriving on Earth's surface, but you don't see tau, right? So only at the colliders. But what about these new neutrinos? So neutrinos, as you remember, this from the beta decay, right? So neutron decay into proton plus electron and anti-neutrino. We know that what is missing in this process. So these are invisible because we don't measure the energy of neutrino directly, uh, just from proton and electron only, there's missing energy. Missing energy, missing momentum. Because of that, uh, we knew actually powerly uh, uh, 1930, he introduced a new particle, a neutrino. Of course, the name of neutrino, uh, neutrino is named uh, by uh, who? Who named this new particle neutrino? Do you know? I, for I forgot. It was Pauli, right? The so Pauli introduced something missing. The neutrino name, the neutrino. At the time, there is a uh, he. They wanted to name neutron, but neutron is a different particle. So uh, neutral. So they wanted to say something neutral, no electromagnetic charge. So so Fermi, right? Enrico Fermi. Uh, call this particle neutrino. So because of that uh, neutrino, uh, we know that something is missing and this neutrino has been discovered. Uh, some, uh, some neutrino experiment and we discovered the other uh, neutrino, mu neutrino, tau neutrino, etc. So because of that, uh, we 
know that the neutrino and electron has a doublet. How do we know? How do we know the neutrino and electron uh, has a doublet? So, so we have a similar process with the neutrinos, uh, mu decay. So muon is unstable. It decays, so it decays into electron, electron neutrino, and mu neutrino. So I'm distinguishing there's the bar quantity and on bar. The bar on bar distinguishes. We don't know whether neutrino is Majorana or Dirac. So in the case of Dirac, you have a distinction uh, between particle and antiparticle. So bar means antiparticle. On bar is just particle. Because of that, uh, here, uh, I think that I didn't say much that there's a standard model, the baryon number and lepton number is good symmetry. Baryon number, lepton number is good symmetry. So baryon has to do with the quarks, right? Baryons. Hadron, hadron, all the hadrons are baryon. The lepton is, is a lepton, right? So we assign lepton number plus one. Neutron and proton. And we know that proton and neutron composed of three quarks, U, D, D, and U, U, D. Because of that, baryon number equal to one third for U or D. And also other, I mean, other quarks also, one third. Then you can sum up the baryon number to get plus one for proton and neutron. Of course, the baryon number equal to zero for leptons. Leptons, neutrino, electrons. The lepton number equal to plus one for electron mu one and neutrino mu neutrino etc. So this is minus one if if you have a if you take the antiparticle okay there is no fractional lepton number in the standard model. Maybe if you think about weird BSM scenario, maybe you can assign some fractional lepton number, but I, I don't know. So because of that, this assignment, you see that this process is the beta decay for proton. So heavy element, heavy element, decay of heavy elements. You see the okay. So value uh, number, lepton number. Baryon number plus one was to plus one. No baryon number. Lepton zero and ele electron plus one. Anti electron neutrino minus one. So both baryon and lepton number conserved. Also, uh, because these are leptonic processes, muon decay, no baryon, no baryons. So plus one equals two, plus one, minus one, plus one. So these are vanishes. So also lepton number is a concept. So we will see this more. And we don't know why uh, it is good symmetry, but this is accidental. We know if there is no good reason for the symmetry, we say this is accidental, accidental universe. Excellent. Okay. okay. Uh, also, there is the important gauge symmetry, as I said, gauge symmetry and renormalizability. And also, there's important 
symmetry, which is the discrete uh, symmetry, so called CPT theorem. So let, me, let us continue. Uh, I will uh, briefly discuss discrete, these are discrete symmetries the, after. So this is a CPT theorem, but you don't have to impose it uh, separately, but the uh, local QFT. So local means the interaction occurs point-like, local quantum field theory, CPT theorem applies. You don't have to impose it separately. And this local symmetry, so sometimes it's due to the wrench symmetry. Normally, it is sufficient that uh, there's a CPT symmetry if you have a Lorentz symmetry. So you don't, you can forget about CPT theorem, but uh, it's a consequence. Okay, this is not accidental symmetry, so it's because of the requirement from the symmetry. Okay, and uh, discrete and continuous, we are going to distinguish between continuous and discrete symmetries. So, but uh, yeah, we'll discuss. Uh, we'll, uh, okay, so let's uh, make a pause for five minutes. Okay, then 11.15, 11.15, yeah, we'll continue. So if you have a question, can I ask? I, I have one. Mm -hmm. Since uh, uh, baryon and lepton number conservation is accidental, mm -hmm. uh, what is the, the consequence if we, if we find um, it's, it's a violated symmetry? Like the biggest mm -hmm. consequence of that? Yeah, so a good question. So uh, if baryon or lepton numbers are good symmetries, then we don't exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so but, but, uh, yeah, and then baryon and high baryon. This is what uh, allows protons to decay? Yes. Okay. Because there are, there are conditions for, for us to exist. So Sakharov. A cut of uh, conditions, baryon uh, genesis, baryon number genesis, right? Bar baryon asymmetry. So, okay. so, one of the conditions is baryon number violation or lepton number violation. Yeah, and then there are, there are two other conditions. As you know, the, the other one is this CP violation and charge violation. And the third condition is out of equilibrium. So once you produce a symmetry, it shouldn't be uh, diluted because of that uh, uh, produced baryon number must be out of equilibrium. So frozen kind of, uh, in the case of dark matter abundance, I mean, the dark matter freeze out process, we know that dark matter number is frozen, does not annihilate any further, right? So this kind of freeze out process is required. So these three three processes, uh, three conditions. So one of them is baryon number violation or lepton number violation. So if you break baryon number, the baryogenesis. If you break lepton number, then the leptogenesis. In the end, uh, we want the baryon asymmetry. The lepton of lepton of asymmetry is converted to baryon number asymmetry because of the spar level process. So we don't require extra process, but the spar level exists because of the standard model. So kind of uh, unstable, it's, to, it's not topological solution. It's, a, it's not topological, topological state unstable. It's, a, it's not stable, uh, but the spar level uh, is a classical solution to the equation motion in the standard model, then at least you can produce it uh, and it decays. But uh, while 
the spiraling object is kind of weird object. Is that it, it once it's produced, then you are violating baryon plus lepton uh, explicitly. So B plus L is broken because of the spiraling process. So once you generate the lepton number, you are converting the baryon number, for instance. So so I think this is a good question. So we need to break the, also the baryon, I think the older symmetries must, must be broken. I don't know how, how to what extent we need to break it. Yeah, but uh, it's a good symmetry. It's, it's a kind of a paradox. We don't see them in the standard model, but we need, we need them. We need to break them, but we don't see the violation of baryon of lepton number in the standard of the processes, but we need them. We need to break them for us to survive. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> OK, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so I will go to the toilet. So let's just uh, resume, resume the recording. So what is the consequence of the CPT theorem? So CPT theorem just to particle mass, anti-particle mass, they are same. The lifetime of anti-particle, particle and anti-particle, they are the same. And charge of particle, charge of anti-particle, they are the same. So these are three. Uh, Is the same for charge? Minus. <laughs> absolute value, sorry, absolute <laughs> Okay. Oh. Sometimes there's some test of CPT violation. Sometimes a CPT. If normally, if you break the range symmetry, uh, you are breaking also CPT theorem. You can look for the right violation of the range symmetry, like a loop quantum gravity. So there is a one candidate for quantum gravity, loop loop quantum gravity. But in this case, range symmetry. It's an emergent symmetry. It's not, it is from the beginning broken explicitly. So CPT symmetry is broken in this theory. So, but uh, I think the, there is an interesting discussion about the violation of the CPT symmetry. We haven't found any evidence for the violation of the CPT symmetry. So beyond the well, beyond the Planck scale. So we don't see any evidence. So we believe that the CPT symmetry is unbroken. At least in the visible sector, maybe there's something sterile neutrino, I don't know. You may say that there might be some violation in the sterile neutrino, but we don't see them in the visible sector. Okay, now, uh, because uh, we are going to discuss uh, the Lagrangian, uh, let me make a convenient choice for the unit. So natural unit is the H bar, the speed of light, they are set to one, and also Boltzmann constant set to one. Therefore, uh, thermal energy is also equal to temperature. So temperature is the same unit as energy in this unit. Because C equal to one, we know that three times 10 to the eight meters second equal to one. Therefore, length is the same unit. And uh, this T is not temperature. So this T is time. The length and time they have the same unit, right? So one second, therefore one second, 
in meters, three times 10 to the eight meter, right? So h bar equal to one, meaning that the h bar is a six, uh, six point six times 10 to the minus 25 GV times second equal to one. Therefore, so one second is the inverse energy. So inverse GV, GV Right, and we know that the energy, the work, the the rest mass, mass energy, Einstein relation. So C equal to one. Therefore, the energy has the same unit as um, mass. So the GV is the energy, right? So energy is the GV. The giga electron volt is the energy unit, and the mass is the same as energy. So here, one second, because of that one second, here we have a GeV scale in the denominator. So time is the same unit as inverse energy. The inverse energy is the one over mass. So M, so this M, sorry, let me put it here, M, capital M, instead of small. So length, I mean, this is time is the mass, inverse mass. Therefore, the length equal to time equal to one over mass, the one over energy. So for instance, cross-section, uh, sigma has a unit of length square, which is the one over mass square or one over energy square in this natural unit. Okay, so, and then uh, the, now we are going to discuss action and then Lagrangian density. The action, uh, tip, uh, action, has the same uh, unit as angular momentum because of this e to the i action divided by h bar. And so this is S is action. Same dimension as h bar, angular momentum. So this angular momentum. So we, because of that, uh, when H bar equal to one in natural unit, uh, S is the same unit as H bar, H bar equal to one. So this is the mass dimension zero. So zero mass dimension. Action is uh, kind of, we call dimensionless because uh, we are measuring all the length, time, energy, all can be measured in unit of mass. So because of that, so there is no action that has a no mass dimension. So then the Lagrangian density. We know that action is given by the time integral of the Lagrangian. And this Lagrangian becomes density 
So if you think of continuous system, so if you have a single particle, you have a Lagrangian. So this is continuous. Um, continuous particles, okay, particle, you have a stack of particles. They look like, they look continuous. If you see them far away, so they continuous, then you have the volume factor. So this, uh, as you know, this is the Lagrangian density. So this Lagrangian is particle. The Lagrangian density is more for the distribution of particles. So because of that, we are talking about density like object. So, and then dt, time integral and volume integral, they uh, uh, can be combined into the space-time volume. So space-time volume is length to the force because the time is the same unit as length. And then we have a three volume. So space-time volume is length to the fourth. And the length to the fourth is nothing but inverse uh, mass to the fourth, m to the minus four in unit of mass, in natural unit. So it's a mass dimension minus four. Because of that, this Lagrangian must scale like m to the four to cancel this mass uh, dependence such that the action must be m to the zero. No mass dimension for the action. The Lagrangian, because of that, the Lagrangian has mass dimension m to the four or plus four. It's dimension four. We call dimension four. If a certain quantity scales m to the certain power, then we call this object has dimension something. So this Lagrangian has dimension four. The action is dimension zero. Zero. Okay, so. Uh, so keep you, you can keep it, keep this mind. Uh, the Lagrangian density has dimension four. So because this is the beginning of of the standard model, the, we are going to discuss the individual uh, particle uh, before applying them to a particular uh, example. So in the in the QFT. So this is the kind of general QFT discussion, but not, we are not uh, doing quantum physics yet, but uh, so we free, free scalar field. So now we, are, we want to describe spin zero object. So the wave function, you can think about wave function without spin information. So just like pion, there is no spin, for instance. Higgs, there is no spin. Because of that, the Lagrangian density, in this case, so this is color field we call phi, and phi is the a function of space and time. And then the Lagrangian, for the free, free scalar field can be written in this particular form. So you can then, uh, what is the, you can estimate what is the dimension. We could, we are interested in mass dimension, dimension of phi. Kind of, uh, this kind of book, bookkeeping information so dimension of the field is the bookkeeping, which is uh, very useful when you extend uh, your model. 
So the free means there is no interaction. The free particle is just free without interaction, but if you extend the model with interactions, there is important what the dimension is, the field dimension, right? So, and then here, the, we have a covariant derivative around the mu, which is the derivative with respect to the space-time, because this field has, we call this uh, x and t combined into four vector, so x mu equal to time and space coordinate. The time coordinate, we can put c. You can measure the distance along the time direction. I mean, if you compare the distance in time direction to the special direction, you need to make sure those distances are the same. So space, but the C here, C simplicity there, but the C equal to one, right? In natural units. So T and X combine into four vector, right? And then this is four vector. So this is a gradient. So the gradient means this gradient vector, um, it's a gradient uh, composed of the, uh, this combination. And then, you know, the gradient uh, vector uh, sorry. from there, you have a delta. So because the x mu equal to tx, you can see, you can infer what is the gradient. Uh, and the gradient written in this, it should be written in this form. And the mu nu, this so mu nu, one, one, two, three. Then this gradient uh, written down there, and then here we have an index, the raised index, right? Round the mu. That's a G mu nu. Round the mu. So this is the range contracted quantity. The new upper index, new in the downstairs, they contracted. So, so this object uh, transforms under the range transformation as a four vector. So this is the inverse metric. Right? So inverse metric, uh, we are interested in the uh, flat space, Minkowski. Then the Minko this metric is just the one minus one minus one minus the zero. The mu nu, they uh, run from zero to three, right? So just to, then you can see that round to mu, round to, these are range invariant to, um, combination. So because one index downstairs, uh, uh, another index in the upstairs, they contract it, so they, Transform as a scalar part, scalar quantity under the range transformation. Okay, so just to, uh, because there is the beginning, just to let, I'm elaborate on that. Uh, but the bottom line is that from from the form of the uh, uh, Lagrangian in this form, you can infer the dimension, right? So here, the the this uh, derivative, right? So one of the lengths. One over length. Derivative is one over length, which is the mass dimension. And this another de derivative, which is one over uh, length is the mass dimension. So we have a m m, so m square from the derivatives. Then, then we can infer the dimension of phi, right? So we know that the Lagrangian density has dimension four. Therefore, the field dimension phi equal to m 
dimension, dimension. So m square, phi phi m square, and we have a one of the, I mean, the derivatives of m square. And then here, then the phi square is mass dimension square. So this m square is a mass dimension. So m is mass, we call this is mass. Uh, so we have the correct definition for mass. Therefore, the mass has dimension. Uh, sometimes I mixed the not notations. So this is M and so let me call this mass plus one and this is plus one. So this is plus four actually. Uh, <clears throat> So then from for just for completeness for the for the Lagrangian, this Lagrangian, if you vary the Lagrangian, kind of you are obtaining the classical equation motion by variational principle, then you can get the equational motion. This phi, this is the long version four dimensional Dalam motion operator, which is a G menu. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, so we call this as Klein Gordon equation. So Klein Gordon equation is very important. Uh, so second uh, case is free. Dirac field. The free Dirac field, the, the Lagrangian, can be written down in this form. And the round slash is the written as gamma matrix, gamma mu times the covariant derivative. So this is uh, the derivative, covariant derivative. I mean, uh, the, Gradient, gradient. So the gamma is the number, the gamma matrix is gamma matrix is there are four gamma matrices, and this is the four by four gamma matrices, and this is a number, just number numbers, no dimension because of that. Gradient the round slash has mass dimension plus plus one. So this is inverse length. So mass dimension plus one. Because of that, uh, this fermion and fermion bar. So fermion bar psi bar equal to psi conjugate times zero component of the gamma matrix. Because of this, the psi bar psi they are uh, the same dimension. Therefore, Lagrange density, sorry, the dimension of the Dirac field is uh, three half, three half. So you have a twice and three <coughs> from the one derivative, you have four. Four uh, dimension four for the Lagrangian density. So equation motion is called Dirac equation. Again, you can vary. The Lagrangian with respect to Dirac, this Dirac field uh, or the conjugate, then you can obtain the equation motion, which it takes this one. So this is the Dirac equation. Okay. So now electromagnetic field. Oh, by the way, this M. Here, okay, naturally, you see this is M written down there, and the second term is, has a mass dimension, M equal to. So we can interpret this term as the mass of the particle. <clears throat> the electromagnetic field, the Lagrangian density, can be written down here. Uh, F mu nu, so F mu nu has given by 
the gradient of the uh, four. So this is our gauge field A mu. So A mu is the electromagnetic field composed of the scalar, the gauge uh, with the electromagnetic, electrostatic potential and vector potential in electromagnetism. So uh, those are combined into this uh, gauge field. So this the uh, Maxwell field. And the Maxwell, uh, we know the Maxwell equation uh, doesn't change the form under the gauge transformation. Lambda is a trend arbitrary, arbitrary function, and lambda. So these are gauge symmetric because for for some region we call this U one electromagnetism. So at this level, uh, U1 is the kind of unitary transformation. Uh, but we can see whether it is U1 or not from, from the electron wave function. The wave function, electron wave function was uh, changing, something like this. So this is an electron. function because of this phase it's the arbitrary real function so this is a phase just phase right so without without changing the absolute value of the electron wave function we can we are able to trans change the definition of the wave function so in any case, from, from this Lagrangian, we can infer the field dimension. The field dimension, uh, F mu nu, ah, the, by the way, this gauge symmetry, from the gauge symmetry, this is the field strength tensor. The field strength tensor is invariant. invariant under the gauge transformation. Uh, because of that, this guy invariant and then F U U nu in the, in the upstairs also invariant. The, whenever you have an index in the, in the upper stairs, you need to multiply by, uh, we need to multiply by the inverse metric. So, Okay, so just the uh, F nu G nu sigma G nu O F sigma O. So this field strength tensor is defined as the uh, derivative of the gauge potential, and you multiply inverse metric twice to get this form of the filter strengths. We know that this is invariant. The corresponding uh, uh, quantity with the upper index is also invariant under the gauge transformation. So because of that, we call this gauge, gauge invariant, this Lagrange is gauge invariant. And the field dimension The dimension also you can infer because we have a derivative here. What is the field dimension of A mu? So here, derivative here, so one over length, so mass dimension, right? And also we have F mu nu, we have another one over length, mass dimension. So mass dimension, uh, mass is square from the derivatives. 
to have a gauge field, then mass dimension one. So because of that mass gauge field has mass dimension one. And the field strength is mass dimension two. So, so now conclude. Uh, so we have a three field, the scala, phi mass dimension plus one, and the fermion mass dimension two, three half, and the gauge field. Mass dimension plus one. So these are three particles. So this is spin zero, spin one half, and spin one. So those are building blocks, spin zero Higgs, spin one half is quarks. Leptons. And also we have a formula. So the formula is a proton neutron, for instance. Spin one is the gauge boson, WG, photon, and gluons. So those are we are going to discuss uh, those fields and interactions between them. But we we want to uh, make sure that uh, th those fields have certain dimensions in this uh, natural limit. Uh, are there are questions? So simple, right? So <clears throat> I have a question, but it's a bit off topic. So I can ask it. And if it's not uh, interesting, then, then nothing. But mm. uh, we don't really know what the Higgs is. So it could be something like composite. So it's curious to me the fact that we could consider like the standard model without any fundamental spin zero particle. Yeah. So it so, could be, uh, yeah. It could be composite like a pion. So yeah, we, 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 we know that there are measures in the standard model. Is it, something, spin zero. is it something special, spin zero, uh, or is just, mm. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, you, as you said, uh, here, in the case of the gauge field, spin one, there is no mass term. So mass term is uh, it's not consistent with the gauge symmetry, right? So I think the, the reason for small mass is due to the gauge symmetry. Even if uh, maybe you can break it spontaneously, but that there, there is a region for a small mass in the case of spin one and spin one half, there, there's also a region for a small capital M. Why M is a small? That kind of question. Because we, uh, particle masses in the standard model, they are all uh, very light and then they are much smaller than certain high scale, like a plank scale, for instance. So, but in the case of scalar field, I mean, in the case of fermion, we have a region like a chiral symmetry. Chiral symmetry, because that if you can, this is the criteria and the tooth to tooth criteria, what is the natural value of the parameter? So when you say about natural naturalness, we, we sometimes we, uh, it is very natural to get small parameter. Then what is the quantitative criteria uh, for the naturalness? So then uh, if there's a symmetry, so if, if you set a certain parameter to, to zero, you enhance the symmetry. Then in, if you make this M to zero, then you have a chiral symmetry. So there is, this is the tooth criteria. So there is a region for the fermion mass 
to be small. And but uh, you know that the, the scalar particle, there is no symmetry in it. If you make m equal to zero, uh, but the other than uh, the scale symmetry. So if you, the scale symmetry, if the, if you take m equal to zero, there's scale symmetry. So if you scale length, time, scale equally, maybe you can increase or decrease, the system does not change, for instance. So I think that in this, but scale symmetry, uh, there are some discussion on scale symmetry, but the, this scale symmetry is not good symmetry uh, in any quantum field theory, it's broken by quantum physics, quantum effect. So so-called uh, scale anomalies. Because you always have to, in, at the quantum level, you always have to introduce certain uh, mass scale in, the, in order to uh, tame the UV divergences because in quantum level there are divergent quantities and then you need to uh, introduce some mass scale because of that you are breaking you are introducing new part and in, um, you, you are introducing some math dimension for parameter in your theory so you are breaking scale symmetry otherwise you cannot uh, you don't know how to deal with uh, divergent uh, quantities. So, yeah, this is not cosmetry. So, there is no good reason for the scalar mass to zero, to be zero. So, yeah, then the pions, if uh, the scalar is a pion like a dimension, we, we are going to discuss pions, like a pion and kion and uh, some other measures, low measures, etc. Those are composite particles. So measures, as I said, Q, Q, Q prime, Q bar. So made of quark and anti-quark pair, right? So these are composite. And uh, there is a good reason for them to be light. Why light? So then as uh, Diana said, if it is composite, they are light because in this case, uh, they are called stone boson. So so-called, they are not uh, precisely called stone boson, but the pseudo, we call pseudo uh, called stone. So there's a proposal for Higgs also Uh, should or or just or not so but we don't we haven't find any evidence for Higgs to be a composite particle so uh, yeah it is interesting if you, yeah, there are there are some differences uh, between Higgs and the from fundamental scalar particle and composite particle so in the end it reduces to to naturalness and whether we want uh, the mass to be natural basically. yeah 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 it okay. can be Planck scale but it could be anywhere between Planck scale and electroweak scale uh, okay thank you yeah but recently, uh, the this naturalness criteria uh, kind of uh, abandoned by many uh, many people. Uh, just focusing on some phenomenology, but it is always good to ask question whether it is natural or not, because the, we are always. But what is the hint for physics beyond the standard model? How are you motivated to introduce something new? 
So the motivation must be due to the naturalness. So if we want to solve the problems, kind of Higgs mass naturalness, you are introducing something new. Otherwise, you don't know how to introduce some new properties. So, uh, okay, oh, actually, uh, hmm? so, yeah, you have a question? I'm sorry. Uh, you're, yes, I also have a question. Mm. Uh, you, you said uh, W and G bosons are also the in one particle, but you also said that if we add a mass term to them, then mm. then the Lagrangian should mm. be an Gage invariant. Then yeah. so mm. how so how to how could we describe about their Lagrangian? Mm. Yeah, we are going to discuss uh, about that. So for instance, if you can introduce mass like object because this gauge field has the same dimension as a scalar, you may introduce this kind of term in, the, in your Lagrangian. And from there, you will notice that, uh, uh, but in this case, the, the equation motion looks ugly. So you need to choose certain condition for the gauge field. Let's say we, let me impose that this kind of divergence uh, condition for the gauge field, kind of which is the transverse condition. So uh, kind of photon polarization, polarization oscillating plane is orthogonal to the direction of motion. So this kind of condition you can impose, for instance, then you will get this kind of equation for photon, right? So this is the, the photon mass. But as I said, the, we have a gauge symmetry with the arbitrary function, but this term is not invariant. Under the gauge transformation, right? So it is not good. So we this connected term is good, but the mass term is not good. Uh, but the, we know that W, as you know, as you said, the WOG boson must uh, satisfy this equation. W boson or G boson. There are a lot of problems. So first, gauge symmetry is broken, and unitarity is also broken. The probability. So if you write in this way, maybe you can describe. Uh, in this case, there is no Higgs mechanism. So it's just you are introducing mass. Then the gauge symmetry is broken. No, and not also, but also unitarity is broken. So unitarity in easy word, the probability or norm of states. So you change the norm of the states, then the, there is normalization of the state is meaningless, right? You Once you normalize, you know that even though the shape of wave function changes, you know that uh, you can define, you, you get the same normalization. But the normalization changes, then you don't know. You don't know initial normalization is good or not. So then the, you don't have any prediction. So because of that, these two, I think at least there are two problems. So, but the, Higgs mechanism, you need the Higgs mechanism because of that. So, Higgs mechanism will solve 
because of that, we need to introduce six double lid. So we, we said uh, there's a double lid for quark and lepton. Similarly, we, uh, we have a two component, right? So, so here is plus and pi zero. So complex scalars. Then this is the L. Maybe you can put L, but this it's not chirality. Uh, so it's the double it. Uh, scalar particle doesn't have a chirality, so it's a double it. And, uh, so to, yeah. You know the hex mechanism, then you will get uh the W or G boson masses without violation of gauge symmetry, without violation of unitarity. Yeah, because of the D6 mechanism is very important. You want to keep the symmetry of the original Lagrangian, but still you can get some masses. So it's very interesting. So you, yeah. maybe if you don't introduce Higgs interaction, I mean, effectively, you will give a masses to W bosons in this way. But you don't, maybe you can think that, how do we distinguish? How do we distinguish between the case without Higgs mechanism and the case with the Higgs mechanism? How do we distinguish? So that question you need to answer. Yeah, that is an important question. Because of that, the discovery of the Higgs boson is, was so important for the kind of completeness of the uh, standard model. <laughs> yeah, I think the if you didn't find the Higgs boson at the LHC, people thought about many possibilities. They might have thought about many possibilities without Higgs boson. So do you know the Hitoshi Brahma? He proposed Higgs-Lis, Higgs-Lis theory. And the Higgs-Lis theory is dead because of the Higgs discovery. But uh, he touched this unitarity issue without Higgs. He said that he claimed that the unitarity or probability is conserved even if there is no Higgs boson. But we found Higgs boson because of the Higgs, his model is ruled out, something like that. So, <clears throat> okay, shall we continue? So Higgs mechanism we'll discuss in the full, uh, fully for the standard model. It's not a toy model, but the fully for the standard model, we are going to discuss uh, what's mechanism for uh, giving masses to W and G bosons. <laughs> for the remainder of the time, I'm going to uh, talk about renormalizable and non renormalizable interactions. So we call power counting. We are classifying interactions. We don't know what is the guiding principle for constructing the Lagrangian, in particular for interaction. We want interacting theory. We just do we don't, we free theory is, uh, it's not, it's, it's not realistic. So the power counting uh, uh, general uh, field theory, quantum field theory, just to uh, renormalizable power counting. I mean, at which level and at which operator we are ignoring our ignorance, for instance. We don't know, but the, 
we know we we want we wanted to know what is the limitation our ignorance for instance so renormalizable so this power counting is a nice So this maybe uh, Songshi has a lot of money to buy books. Maybe if you want, you can buy this. <laughs> this is effective field theory by Cliff Burgess. Actually, he the clip advertised his book during the CA workshop in February. So it's a very good collection of the whole interesting ideas, including gravity. So gravity also uh, this kind of discussion that I'm going to do will apply to any any theory, any we call it effective field theory. So power counting. So, so sometimes so power counting or our I mean the kind of uh, kind of truncation we call some truncation. So if you have an infinite series in mathematical physics, let's say you can truncate a certain a certain term, right? You will ignore the higher order terms. Then what is what is the justification for ignoring the high order terms? Then the units you have a conversion test, right? The series is converging, and then maybe you can sum the series in a closed form. Maybe but you can also truncate the series at certain level, and you can compare. You can sum up to finite terms, and you can compare it to that you, you obtain in a closed form, right? So then of course there are some small differences, but if uh, this series is convergent enough, then your ignorance of the high order term is really justified, something like that. So series expansion, kind of we are doing some series expansion. So the Lagrangian, so let me just focus on the Scala field, but uh, this discussion can be generalized to uh, in the presence of spin, I mean, fermion and gauge field. So, so we are constructing that kind of the, we are adding terms. It's OI's operator. But uh, you can think about the additional term in the Lagrangian other than uh, these terms. We have this, this one, but this is the, uh, this klein Gordon, the free theory, but we are adding more. We are adding more for interactions. So these are uh, operators. And this CI is a dimensionless dimensionless coefficients. So we are required the Lorentz invariance uh, for the Lagrangian. So when we extend the Lagrangian. Uh, So Lagrangian may contain phi independent term. The phi independent term maybe is the dimension zero because there is no phi dependence 
that we call in terms of the phi is the dimension zero. And then we can have a phi in the Lagrangian, then this is dimension one. And phi square, we know this is mass, right? This is dimension two. So I'm counting the full dimension. So phi square is dimension two. So phi q dimension three. And then what about this? This is also the this is the length, one of the length square, this is mass square. So dimension three. So those those terms, dimension less than four, we call super renormalizable. And this is the uh, or the corresponding terms kind of operators where everything is operator because the we are replacing the classical field by some operator. So there is the interpretation at the quantum level, right? So so then in other words, this is a super renormalizable operator is relevant operators relevant. So relevant means that it's the uh, important for low energy. If, if they, they are relevant, we need to keep them. Otherwise, you are losing. I mean, you are not in a full generality. You need reason to uh, forget about this uh, relevant operators. If there is no reason to ignore them, you need to keep them in the low energy they are very important. Otherwise your prediction is completely, would be completely different. And then suppose the Lagrangian contains, what about this? Phi to the fourth. So phi to the fourth, so what is the dimension? Phi to the fourth, dimension four, dimension four. And what about this? Dimension, again four, right? So those are, we call, it is, they are renormalizable. Super means, but uh, they are renormalizable. Renormalizable means, uh, it's good. Renormalizable is good. Non renormalizable is not good. So, but the, I mean, it's a more renormalizable is a technical. So, relevant is more, I think that you can understand, better understand. Renormalizable, so, or it's the marginal or operator, marginal. Its margin is the boundary between relevant and kind of irrelevant operators. So, so still, uh, this marginal operator is important for this case. So we need to keep them, these marginal operators. And this marginal operator coefficient, let's say you can put some coefficient lambda, and some C, this lambda dimension equal to zero, mass dimension zero, right? And this is C, kinetic term, mass dimension zero. So then let me give you an example for more term. You can keep adding more terms. Let's say this one. So what is the dimension of this? Maybe you can uh, you can ignore this. Just lambda to the fifth dimension five and five to the sixth 
dimension six. Uh, phi square, round phi square is also dimension six. So these dimension, these operators are dimension greater than four. We call this a non renormalizable And then in other words, irrelevant. The operator, irrelevant, irrelevant operators. Why they are irrelevant? They are not important for the low energy. So the reason for the irrelevance is that uh, in the Lagrangian, uh, you can, you need to match the dimension of the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian has dimension four, but the phi to the fourth is dimension five. So you need to match dimension. If phi is to the fourth, Belong, belong to, belongs to the Lagrangian. So you need to put some mass scale. So lambda is dimension, mass dimension one. Then you can cancel one dimension, right? To get a dimension four for the Lagrangian. So similarly, uh, lambda square phi to the six. So one over lambda square to match the dimension for this phi to the six term. And also you need to put one over lambda square for the last dimension six operator. So therefore, uh, the effective Lagrangian, you can construct Effective, effective Lagrangian is the effective Lagrangian. It just says some of the all the possible operators allowed by the range symmetry. Maybe if you have a gauge symmetry, then it should be allowed by the gauge symmetry. Then the operator. Dimension smaller than smaller than four or equal to four, you need to keep as the leading term. And the higher the term, this series expansion in field and derivatives. The difference uh, in comparison to the series expansion in mathematical physics is that we have also uh, derivative terms. So derivative and field. It's kind of double expansion. So then operator divide by, so this is a CN. So CN, as I said, this is dimensionless coefficient. And this N, uh, so N dimension, dimension N operator. So N dimension is greater than four. Because of that, you need to uh, divide by one over lambda to a certain power to match the dimension of the Lagrangian. So here, uh, that's one. Then the EFT description is valid when the energy of your interest is much smaller than this lambda then you can ignore uh, irrelevant the operators. You can ignore. You can just uh, you can estimate certain correction due to this high order interaction, but uh, your prediction is dominated by this relevant and 
marginal uh, operators. So this is important. So whenever you have a suppression in the coefficient, then those are irrelevant. So how then, how uh, does the high order interaction become relevant? Because this can be, they are irrelevant because we are in the low energy, but they become relevant if energy is comparable to this lambda. Then you can start to see new particles with the mass lambda. But I don't know, then the, we, we don't know how, uh, we, uh, up to which terms to keep in your series expansion now, because uh, one of the lambda, then all the, all the higher order terms you need to keep. And then you need to deal with the infinite series. Okay, I, I think uh, I have some small discussion about the uh, application of this uh, EFT description. Uh, but I will uh, discuss later. So today is the first lecture. So just let me comment that uh, really scattering uh, why the question is why is the sky blue? So we have we'll discuss uh, this question uh, in particle physics. Okay, so we don't. If you don't have a particle physics, you don't get this answer properly. And EFT, EFT description. And so we'll see. Then, but I think you have already answer to to that question. Why is the sky blue? Oh, uh, you have answer. I forgot about that. I remember that because of from how many goes from from atom in another atom, but for more truth in sky are also, are doing something. Dump them to oscillating model and I forget the reason. I'm sorry. Mm. Anyway, it was, I remember that it was quite hard and <laughs> quite weird. <laughs> Not weird. Mm. Anyway. What's the rainbow question? So, how the rainbow is formed? Yeah, there's a related question, but uh, first, why is the sky blue? and why there is the sunset? You can see nice sky in sunset. I mean, why the sky is so red when you see sunset? So I think that I I I knew from my wife that she was watching on TV that some physicist was invited. So Alto Shinja, do you know Alto Shinja? Korean program, so kind of uh, cable, I don't know, it was cable, I don't know, some TV program, uh, some professor from KAIST was invited and then he was explaining about why sky is blue. I mean, he was explaining it to the, just a normal audience, which doesn't have a physics background. But uh, he explained uh, different way. He, uh, explain wrongly, he explained. So then uh, there was, I didn't know, I, I noticed that it was not correct. Uh, but I don't know, but just uh, then, uh, yeah, there was a blog. I mean, there's a program web page and then somebody com uh, commented that your statement is wrong. And then it turns out that that physicist doesn't have a particle physics background. And he's a physicist, but it's kind of more condensed matter. So he doesn't understand how to compute the scattering cross-section. So just he memorized the fact 
the dependence on the wavelengths of the uh, photon. The, the, the scattering cross-section depends on the, the wavelengths of the photon, but the, he, he just memor, memorized and then he, his memory was not correct. <laughs> so yeah. I think I learned this from Professor Byung-won Ko. So Byung-won Ko from Kias, he was a good professor. He taught, taught us particle physics lecture during my undergraduate. And then he, he was fascinated by this explanation and just in the EFT. So, so that uh, I will repeat the same, same thing for you because it is still interesting. And so if, we are, if we are asked the same question, then you can answer in an elegant way. So I can explain to you why sky is so blue. <laughs> like that so next time okay today is the uh, this